Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going, everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland. I'm out here in the woods with my dog, Gunner, and today we're going to be taking a walk in the woods to learn about wild mushrooms. Uh, if you're interested in mushrooms, um, maybe you've always kind of had a little curiosity about them. They are pretty mysterious and pretty magical. Well, on this channel, on Mushroom Wonderland, that's what we do is we talk about wild mushrooms. And uh, so if you're new, hit that subscribe button and uh, like this video if you like this kind of content. And uh, leave a positive comment, and I always try to respond to everybody. Um, it's just a cool community of mushroom people out here. So some of us are just intrigued with mushrooms and have some strange attraction to them. And I've been that way since I was a little kid. Uh, my grandma got me into discovering and picking and identifying wild mushrooms when I was about 8 years old. I'm 42 years old now, and I am the vice president of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. I'm a bit of a citizen mycologist and I like um, mushroom identification. And so in this video, we're just gonna take a walk in the woods. There's a very elementary look at wild mushrooms and how they're gonna be growing. If you were interested in going out and finding wild mushrooms and trying to discover what they are called, um, my suggestion would be to start in a forest. Uh, forests are typically the best place to find wild mushrooms growing. Uh, you can find them in your lawn. Oftentimes you can find them in landscaping beds. But the forest is just the best place to look for wild mushrooms because there's a lot of shade. So let's just get one thing straight. Mushrooms love moisture. So where I am in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest is a wonderful place. We get a lot of rain here. Uh, and so it makes for a lot of wild mushrooms. You can also find a lot of wild mushrooms in the Midwest and you can find them down south. Um, anywhere that it rains a lot, you can find mushrooms growing. So today I'm coming to you from uh, Western Washington. So I'm on the Kitsap Peninsula, which is basically an island connected by a small strip of land, smack dab in the middle of the Puget Sound of Western Washington. And if you're not familiar with Western Washington, it's divided. Uh, the state is pretty much divided by a mountain range called the Cascades and there's Western Washington and there's Eastern Washington and there's a huge difference in those habitats on the east side. It's, it tends to be a lot more dry, a lot of pine trees and a lot of arid forests and even um, land that's like more like a desert. And then here in Western Washington, it's more lush and we get a lot of rain and uh, especially here in the spring and in the fall. Today I'm walking in this mixed forest. So there's uh, mix different kinds of trees. There's deciduous trees and deciduous trees are the type like that are right behind me These alder trees right here. They lose their leaves in the fall. They regrow them in the spring also known as a hardwood tree um, There's also big leaf maple that grow out here But mainly alder and a little bit of cottonwood and then you can also see a smattering of western hemlock and Douglas fir and there's even some uh, white pine back here and these are examples of conifer trees or evergreens And so they never lose their leaves or their needles. They're always green even in the dead of winter But the and, and those are considered softwoods. So hardwoods lose their leaves softwoods um, Are conifers and they have needles on them and they stay green all year round so here in the Pacific Northwest most of the mushrooms that grow in association with trees, yes, there are some mushrooms that need trees to grow, and they grow with these conifer trees, with the softwood, with the evergreens. Um, sometimes they grow with oak around here, but mainly uh, they associate with trees like this western hemlock right over here. The mushrooms actually grow and they attach to the tips of the roots of the trees and they have enzymes that break down minerals in the soil that they can feed into the tree's roots and in exchange the tree will give carbohydrates to those mushrooms to help the mycelium grow which is the underground body of the mushroom but i don't want to get way off track it can get a little bit confusing but basically for some of these mushrooms to grow above ground the things that you see the things that you cut the things that you cook there has to be a tree that they grow in association with. These are the easiest kind of mushrooms to actually hunt because um, the other kind of mushroom is called a saprotrophic mushroom. And so saprotrophic mushrooms grow on just decaying matter like manure or rotting wood. Um, and they're less predictable. Uh, 
you know, uh, agaricus mushroom, for example, agaricus can just pop up in a field or somewhere in the forest, but they're not connected to any tree. So it's kind of like you get lucky when you find saprotrophic mushrooms growing in the wild, but you can actually head out in search of mycorrhizal mushrooms like chanterelles, lobster mushrooms, porcini mushrooms, matsutake mushrooms, uh, the shrimp russula mushroom. There's just a ton of good edible mushrooms that are going to be growing in association with certain trees. And if I want to find saprotrophic mushrooms, I'm, I can look either in conifer or in a deciduous forest, but uh, where these alders are, there's certain mushrooms that'll grow on the decaying alder that I don't find much on any other kind of trees, like oyster mushrooms, for example, a really popular wild edible mushroom, and it grows on the dead uh, alder uh, logs that are laying around and so basically I don't want to confuse you but I just want to get you a little bit familiar with the two main types of mushrooms so let's say it together mycorrhizal 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 okay and then the other type of mushroom is saprobic or saprotrophic okay you don't have to know that one but just know that there's two types and so a chanterelle is always going to be growing with a conifer tree like this here in the northwest um, out on the east coast they're growing with uh with oak trees and different kinds of deciduous trees so it can be kind of confusing the same type of mushroom growing around the world can associate with different trees and often that's actually a different species type um, of the same genus of mushroom so they can look similar but genetically they're a little bit different but again i'll digress i don't want to confuse you so what we're going to do we're going to walk down this path through this little stand of hardwoods look for any saprotrophic mushrooms laying around and if we uh, get back into this conifer type of forest back here then maybe we'll see some mycorrhizal mushrooms like cortinarius is a huge genre of mushrooms that grow out here and uh but in the spring, they're a little bit rare. But oh, yeah, that's one more thing is that um, the main mushroom growing season is fall in Washington state. We do have a lot of mushrooms that grow in the spring, but not nearly as many desirable edible mushrooms as there are that grow in the fall. So spring, we have like oyster mushrooms and morels, which are really popular edible wild mushrooms. And then there's a smattering of other mushrooms that are a little bit more tricky to identify and maybe less uh, desirable for the table. Then in the fall, we have, uh, you know, chanterelles and porcinis and all the russulas and all kinds of mushrooms that are good for eating. Um, oyster mushrooms can grow in the spring, they can grow in the summer, they can grow in the fall. So great ones to identify. I hope we'll see some of those today. And, uh, but in the spring, we're typically not seeing as many mushrooms as in the fall. You cannot walk five feet out here in the fall without encountering some kind of a mushroom. And we might be searching a little bit more today. So anyways, again, my name is Aaron Hilliard, Mushroom Wonderland. Hit subscribe. Let's go into the woods and see what kind of mushrooms are growing out here. So right here, I've come across a type of mushroom. It's in here growing on a, on the, it looks like an alder log right here. You see this is a dead alder, so a hardwood. And, uh, and we got all of these mushrooms growing on it. Can you see that? Look at this. So it's kind of an exciting find here in the spring. I'm gonna flip this camera around so we can see these mushrooms. So look at this beautiful bloom of mushrooms growing on these trees. Um, they're really kind of leathery and they're really adhered onto there. These ones are actually really light colored, but uh, these are known as Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail. So if you look at these, you can kind of see why they might be called a turkey tail. It looks a little bit like, like a cartoon turkey tail. It has these concentric uh, ring zones with contrasting color so that would be the versicolor part of the uh, scientific latin name and uh, tremedes being the genus underneath you're going to always see little tiny holes so these are pores underneath and this is where the uh this is where the spores um drop out of 
these ones are pretty dried out so the pores look really really tight but I can assure you that these are Trimedes versicolor or the turkey tail mushroom and so they're growing in these big old troops they can be black they can be brown they can have blue in them they can have orange in them so these are a really light colored variety and the older more mature ones are getting a little more brown coloring in them but uh you can pick these and uh, seep them in boiling water simmer them for a couple hours and make a tea out of them and uh, they're said to support immuno health and uh and they're being studied for uh, anti-cancer benefits and antimicrobial and bacterial benefits. So the uh, Trimedes versicolor uh, or the turkey tail mushroom, you can find these growing basically all year round. Beautiful uh, mushroom. You can't really eat this because it's like chewing on tree bark or something. But uh, make a tea or a tincture out of it and uh, highly medicinal, supposedly. So pretty cool. Those are wood decayers. So those are saprotrophic mushrooms and they are just chewing away the inside of that log. So the turkey tails, saprotrophic mushroom, and that just means it's eating and decaying the wood um, inside those logs. So you can hear my feet crunching as I'm walking along. Uh, it's actually pretty dry out here already for, uh, for spring. So we're here May 11th right now. And, uh, whoa, look what we got growing here out of the side. <laughs> Holy smokes, look at that. How cool is that? Let me flip this can. Well, I'll pick this guy. Oh, it's all limp. Look at this. This is known as a morel. What the heck? It's doing growing on the side of the trail right here? I do not know. This is a bit unusual. But, uh, let me flip this camera around and I'm going to show you what this guy looks like right now. So I spy this just growing on the side of this hill like this. And uh, how about that? So this is actually a morel, or a, it's in the genus Morchella. And so this one is a good edible mushroom when it was younger. This one's all distended and old. You can see that it's um, all dried out. It, it released so many spores. And nobody picked this one. It's growing just right on the side of the trail. But, uh, but one of the characteristics of a morcella is it's going to be completely hollow like this um, if i cut this open it'll be hollow right in the middle and so this mushroom actually produces spores all over the outside of it it doesn't have gills like your average uh like grocery store button mushroom but these um will sell for up to 80 dollars a pound in the grocery store um really desirable edibles when they're a little bit younger this one is way past its prime so if you're picking old mushrooms and eating them you can get sick from eating rotten food just saying but uh these uh if you see these kind of mushrooms growing uh in the spring they are the most desirable spring mushroom this one is probably uh, morcella tridentina probably growing with some of these big um, douglas fir trees in a mycorrhizal type connection but there's still a lot of mystery around these particular mushrooms morel mushrooms but uh but you can see it looks like little ladders going up here. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Morcella tridentina. This one, a morel mushroom growing here in the spring in western Washington. And if I would have been here a couple weeks earlier, it uh, would have been good eating. But I'm going to leave that there. So Always cool to find morels, even if they are a little bit limp and stuff. And this would be the time when I'd slow down and start to look closer in this area. And there's a good chance that when you find one, there's going to be more, sometimes a lot more, um, so this one has um, done its duty. It has spread millions of spores out across the forest floor, but I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes open. I didn't expect uh, to see morels growing in a conifer forest in Western Washington. Uh, but this has been a weird year for morels. They've just been growing like crazy around here. And so, uh, you know, be ready for anything. So cool, Marcella. Let's keep on moving. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Look at down here. There's another one. Another old dried out little morel. I don't know, man, these are super pointy. And a little cap and big fat stem. So definitely a species of Morcella, but I don't know if it's the Tridentina that I thought it was. Maybe somebody wants to chime in in the comments if they know exactly which Morcella species this is. But um, 
but they're all edible. All of these that are hollow inside and have this very distinct cap, you know, the pits and grooves and all this stuff going on on the cap. This is very indicative of a morel mushroom. So this guy's putting a lot of spores out into the atmosphere. Cool, it looks like a little fairy house. So I bet if I was to go trudging around out here in this salal and moss that I'd probably come across a bunch more of them. They didn't get extremely huge here, or maybe that's just whatever species this is, but uh, pretty cool. Looks like a weird little wizard hat. So, neato. So yeah, kind of crazy coming across these little, cute little morels popping up in the moss here. It's been a really good season for morels, so get out there. If you're new, go try to discover those, and then do your research online don't use this video as a definitive field guide. You gotta, you gotta check your stuff uh, against books and reference materials on the internet. And make sure that you're safe to eat it. Here's a weird little guy that's growing here all alone. Um, this is a pretty flimsy, delicate little mushroom. It's always got little fuzz on the bottom of the base like that. It's got these striations on the stipe. And then it's got this kind of hygrophonous cap. That means that it's sort of fading uh, with age and with dryness. Underneath here, nothing spectacular going on. There's going to be some gills under here. And they've got a little bit of a pinkish hue to them. And if you laid this mushroom cap down on a piece of glass or on a mirror or on a piece of uh, paper, white paper, you'd see a little buff pink spore print uh, that puts this in the genus uh, no, Nolenia, or subgenus Nolenia, um, the genus being Entoloma, in a family of mushrooms that are known for being toxic. So definitely we just leave that one alone. But the uh, Entoloma, um, can't think of the uh, species name, but not that important. Just know those uh, those guys with the pink spores, not the best of eating, if not poisonous. So just leave them behind. one of these bog lands around this little lake uh, here in western Washington kind of near the Tahuya State Forest a lot of that same kind of plant and wildlife habitat uh, great mushroom foraging area out here in these kind of places and I just love this kind of place so here I come across another downed deciduous log with all this beautiful fungal growth on it look at this another good example of turkey tail mushrooms or trimedes versicolor look at these ones are a lot more colorful really really pretty mushrooms underneath you're going to see those pores the pore surface under there these uh yep they're very small but you can see the different pores so so there you go, more Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail mushroom, really common, growing on the uh, on the down hardwood trees around here, all times of year, but they seem to be very beautiful right now in the spring. So let's keep walking a little ways in these woods and see what we can find. As I'm walking along, I, I see these, so how pretty are those? Those will definitely catch your eye as you're walking by. And they're very like leathery and hard. They're kind of woody. If you look underneath, more uh, pores, uh, like the turkey tail, but these ones are obviously very different than turkey tails. They have kind of like these long stems on them. And they're growing off of dead wood too. They're chewing up that wood inside this uh, the stump that's over here. These ones are in the genus Picepes. Uh, not edible. They're like hard and rubber. You know, they're kind of like leather, like chewing on uh, shoe leather. Uh, but a pretty addition. They're very durable. They can handle a lot of abuse and they're just doing their job chewing up wood and spreading their spores out. So I'm helping them along a little bit. So Picepes. Um, oh, and if we look right down here, look at how cute these little guys are. 
Wow, that's very, very small. Um, probably Mycena. Um, potentially something in the uh, in the uh, Gallerina family, but uh, but cute little mushrooms. Look at how small that little guy is. Very, very cute. Mushrooms are just so mysterious. I would probably call those Picepes badius, but they really don't have a very... Well, I suppose they do. They do have kind of a dark stem, so commonly called the uh, black-footed polypore, always growing on wood, just like that. So pretty Picepes badius growing here in the spring, in May, and uh, another polypore mushroom. Not one good for eating, and I've never heard of anybody using it medicinally, so, you know, but that's what it is, so keep it moving. Right here we come across this really cute little mushroom growing out of the uh, side of the hill right here. Look at that little guy. That's what you call decurrent gills. See the gills under there? That's a little piece of paper looking things. They're kind of running down the stem. Now the stem is also called the stipe. But, uh, and this one is very umbilicate, you know. It's got this little belly button right in the middle of the cap. So, um, some distinguishing features on this one. I'm going to call it... Uh, I, ha I think that it's Lycum unphyla um, umbellifera or a lichen agaric, but a pretty little mushroom growing on the side of the hill right here. I'm having a hard time focusing, but uh, some, some very distinct identifiers on this mushroom. There's another one of those Entoloma millennium mushrooms. Pretty common in the spring here. This is a cool part of the forest. So look right down here in this uh, pine needle duff. There's some white pines growing right here. And look at this. Here's a little mushroom. It's got some little spots on the cap. Um, Kind of looks like the Mario mushroom, right? A little red one with the uh, white spots, but this one's more yellow. And so uh, this one, if I dig down far enough, I'm gonna find that it's coming out of a little sack. There's gonna be a little sack down here. This is, see that? See how it's coming out of this little thing? And this little thing has left little remnants up here on top of the cap. And so this one, is in the family Amanita. So Amanitas also um, contain the uh, deadliest mushrooms in the world, the Amanita phylloides and the uh, destroying angels. Um, this one uh, would probably be in the Gemata um, subgenus, Amanita Gemata. Um, there are Amanita pantheranoides or Ameripantherina that grow here that are more brown. But this one, because it's got kind of this peachy yellowy color. I'm going to say that it's probably Amanita gemata. Probably a good one to avoid. A lot of these mushrooms are poisonous. They contain muscamol and iobotanic acid that can be really toxic to humans. And so we're going to replant that and, and it will um, maybe open up and drop some spores. Uh, but there's no shortage of these mushrooms around here. They're just not very well studied. So um, it could be a completely new species of mushroom. But for the sake of quick identification and safety, we'll call it Amanita Jamata. And we're going to leave that there and keep on moving. Oh, yeah. And that's another mycorrhizal mushroom. So growing here, we got this western hemlock. It's got these little soft needles, little tiny needles, and they're real kind of wispy and flat. These are good mycorrhizal uh, mushroom tree partners. And right here... Uh, growing it was actually growing right at the base of this so this has these long needles this one um, if you counted these little clusters of needles i've counted these ones before and there's five needles per cluster that would make it a white pine so white pine around here grows mushrooms mycorrhizally here's some more little mushrooms and these ones uh yeah another uh entoloma species or nolenia species probably uh, don't know these ones all that well, but uh, but yeah, these trees um, also have mycorrhizal partners here in the northwest, even though they're not nearly as common. Find all these pine needles. I 
So while we're at it with the tree identification, we got the white pine, big long needles and clusters of five. Right here we got western hemlock. This one has uh, got really soft little needles and and uh, it's actually called uh, Tsuga heterophylla. Um, so it means different size leaves. Look, they're all different sizes. So pretty easy to, to identify the uh, western hemlock. Really kind of wispy, often have a floppy tip at the top. Um, right back here, we got Madrona. Uh, those peel, and they're pretty distinct looking, but no mycorrhizal partners that I know of. Um, and uh, I'm having a hard time spotting a Douglas fir. Uh, here's a Douglas fir. Going right here, all the same size needles. And uh, the problem here, this fir just can't get enough sunlight. They really need full sunlight. But Douglas fir... A really common tree and also really really good uh, mycorrhizal mushroom partner so between the the douglas fir the white pine and the western hemlock you have a trifecta of good mycorrhizal mushroom potential right here in this patch of forest and it's all smattered in with different brush like uh, black huckleberry and salal and uh and you know, I, I believe that a lot of the mushrooms also connect with a lot of these plants because you always find certain plants around certain mushrooms. Um, so, but it's important to see and understand and know the kinds of trees and plants growing around if you want to find the right mushroom habitat. Uh, so yeah, little tree ID for you real quick there. Quick little plant ID sesh. These are uh, sword ferns. Really common here in the Northwest. Good indicator of good mushroom habitat because they require a similar amount of moisture to be growing. Uh, right here, bracken fern. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, can be used, the, the, the base of them can be used as a food in a survival situation, but I'm gonna not really go into that too much. We got a little mushroom here, another one of those Entoloma nilenias. And uh, it's all wavy and blown out, all old and dried out. So we might be reaching the end of spring mushrooms soon, you know. It's just getting really dry. Look, here's a couple more um, millennias. So, again, kind of neat to look at. This one has an, a real umbanit cap. You see this little nipple on the top of the cap? It's called an umbo. So if you ever hear that term, it's got an umbo. That's what that is. If you look over here, uh, this one has a really undulate margin. So the edge of the cap is really wavy like this. This would be called undulate or undulating. And the margin is the very edge of the cap. It's umbonit. And, uh, and an, oh wow, you can really see the pinkness of the spores there. So uh, definitely putting it in the genus of Entoloma. And it's got these little spider webby looking hairs known as the Cortina. Pretty cool. Beautiful little mushroom. Look over here, a whole family of them, so they're cool. Very pretty little mushrooms growing here in the woods. But wouldn't want to eat these ones. Look at how hygrophonous they are. This one's fresher. You can see how dark brown it is. And then this one is irregularly drying. And these ones are ever more dry as we go on. You see that, how dry the cap looks. So that feature is called hygrophonous. And if you look down on the bottom of the stipe, it's got all this fuzz. These are what are known as rhizomorphs. So let me pluck that guy out and get you a real close up. See all those little tiny hairs? That's the mycelial structure of the mushroom. That's the actual body of the mushroom. It's growing underground right in that little hole that I dug it out of. Where'd it go? There it is. You can see the mycelium in there. That's the body of the mushroom. And this is just the reproductive organ. So under there, it's dropping these little pink spores out to uh, spread its seed, if you will. So a good example of a lot of different distinguishing features of a mushroom here. So a lot of information at once. I understand that. I know I'm just doing a free for all freestyle video here. And so uh, if you're having a hard time keeping up, I suggest you go back to some of the other videos like Understanding Mushrooms Part 1 and Part 2 that came out last fall. Uh, has a lot of good 
information for you and some graphics and things like that to help you wrap your head around how this all works. More turkey tail. These ones definitely have more of a blue look to them. Beautiful. And then I didn't walk too far on the next one and down here I see more mushrooms growing in this somewhat deciduous area of the forest. And this one feels quite a bit more moist and look at the gills there, very, very distinct kind of pink gills. Um, and they're very wavy and, and broad, wide spaced. Um, so these mushrooms have a certain feel and uh, once you under once you know the feel of this type of this genus of mushroom, you'll you'll be able to identify basically the uh, you know the whole genus when you see them. This one falls in the uh, in the genus Lacaria, so maybe Lacaria proxima, uh, the spring uh, deceiver that grows around here in western Washington. Uh, Lacaria lacata and Lacaria uh, bicolor and Lacaria amethysto occidentalis. A beautiful purple version of this grows in the fall, but these ones are fairly common here in the spring. Um, I'm just going to call it the Lacaria species, and you, most of these are, are edible, uh, although people don't really seek them out to eat them. Um, you could, in a pinch, eat these, but you would want to cook them uh, just like any other wild mushroom. Make sure that you cook them. You could probably put them in a soup or something like that. Pretty sure those are safe, um, but always do your research. Um, but Lacaria generally a safe genus of mushrooms and so distinguishing pink color kind of striations on the stipe like that and uh, they've got kind of a waxy feel to them so anyway it's kind of cool seeing a flush of those and we'll just call those a uh, Lacaria proxima and uh, keep on moving oh there's some more pretty ones look at how weepy the cap looks like a looks like an umbilicate parasol you see Interesting. Huh, Gunner? So interesting. He, he loves mushroom season because I'm always stopping. Oh, wow. Look a whole bunch more. And look how hygrophonous the cap is on this Lacaria. Very cool. Wow. And then look at the gills on that. So, unique, man. A lot of these mushrooms have really distinguishing features. So, identification really isn't that hard when you consider all the different features that you can compare against other mushrooms right here oh we, here's another one this one's got kind of a metallic look on it and uh i'm gonna pull that up oh we got kind of white gills but i can see a pink tinge to them and underneath this moss right here where these are growing these are actually dried out but these are known as deer mushrooms or plutea cervinus group and these ones grow in the fall and in the uh and in the spring um these ones are kind of puny. They're just growing on this little stick. So although they're fully mature and they've spread their spores, um, they just didn't have a ton of food to eat. So this is as big as the fruiting body's got on these Pluteus. They've got this really kind of metallic, almost pancake colored brown on the top of the cap. And uh, the gills are going to be white with a pink tinge. These ones are dried out. Um, but the deer mushroom or Pluteus cervinus. And yeah, you could eat those. Those are a good example of a saprotrophic mushroom. They're always eating dead wood. So, Pluteus or Pluteus or the deer mushroom. Fairly common growing on logs around here in the Northwest. When you're looking for mushrooms, you gotta slow down. Um, and just kind of scan your eyes. The more you do it, the more practice you get the better you are gonna get at it. You'll start to recognize mushroom shapes easier and better. A little trail going down here. Let's see what we can find down here. And so, um, yeah, just scanning the, the ground, looking for anything that's uh, different colored or odd shaped. Ah, so right down here, my eyes just pick this up. Well, of course I see this litter, which I might put in my pocket, but here we got some little white mushrooms growing here on this old rotten wood. So I think this is just like the one that we saw earlier, the uh, Lycanum phalia 
Umbellifera or the lichen agaric. Beautiful little mushrooms. And they like to grow in the spring and it's growing right out of the wood here. So uh, it's quite a mouthful to say. You could call it the lichen agaric or lichen umphila umbellifera. It's a beautiful name. Umbellifera. Man, I, I just think that's one of the prettier mushroom names personally. But growing on dead wood like this. This one's actually not even a mushroom. This one is, is actually a lichen that, that creates a fruiting body that looks a lot like a mushroom, but this is in fact a lichen. Cool. What are you finding, bud? I see an area like this with all this downed, rotten wood, and I just think jackpot. You know, this mushrooms like growing around this kind of stuff. Right here, another Entoloma, Noliana. I'm just like machine gun firing mushrooms at you right now. Hope you can keep up. Hit pause, go back, look these up, you know, look them up. This is what's growing out here, Western Washington right now in May. So if you go out in a similar forest, you might find these very same mushrooms and you can experiment with the ones that are edible, you know, try them out. You might discover there's a reason why not a lot of people are eating a ton of these mushrooms. You could find the lacarias. It's a pretty big patch back there, but you know, there's other mushrooms out here a little more desirable, so I'm not going to be eating Lacaria tonight. But you can. You can do it. It's beautiful out here. Where are we going, bud? Where are we going? Oh, wait. I see one right over here. Let's check this out. Oh, growing right here on the log. I've talked a lot about these. Oh, there's quite a few of them. They look like crabs or something clung onto this log. Cool, beautiful. Oh, and there's even a different one. So look at this, it's got brown all over it. This is spores. And this is known as the Gamma, the Gamoderna, I'm sorry. This one's known as Ganoderma organensi and uh, also known as a Rishi. And it blows its spores right up on top. This one's old, it's from last year. Right here we have Fomatopsis monsiae, or the red belted conch. There's more growing here. These are, uh, yeah, this one right here is a little more obviously red, and then this white part would be called the belt. So red belted conch. And they grow these strange blobby formations. These ones, a little confusing looking, but right over here, another one. I'm gonna call that the red belted conch, or Fomatopsis monsiae. Here's another strange version of it well this one's more red this one's even more red yet so really common wood decomposer here in the northwest they grow all over down conifer logs like this and uh, you can see they're all over this oh yeah and so this one even has a couple of other conch mushrooms that are kind of interesting look at these so these ones are known as ganoderma aponatum uh, so or the artist conch and they're uh, they can grow in these stack formations like this. Look a little bit like a stack of flapjacks or something like that. Look at these ones. So you might have seen Paul Stamets' movie, uh, Fantastic Fungi, where he talked a lot about agaricon. And you might be like, whoa, there's an agaricon. But this one's not. Even though it forms a cool formation like that, it's awfully small to be an agaricon for one. I don't want to detach it from here, but if you were to write under here, scratch it with your fingernail, it, it stains and bruises really easily. So uh, I'm gonna not damage this one too much because it's really cute. But there's a few of them growing here. Ganoderma aplanatum, kind of a pancake stack. So beautiful. This log, this conifer log right here, this is a Western hemlock, but you can tell by the tight grains on the bark, but this one's just getting munched on by all these mushrooms. They're really, really loving it. Look at the variability in the different conchs. These are all the same, Fomitopsis monsiae. See, this one's got an orange belt, or the, the orange band on it. This one's big, and you just see a little bit of the red or maroon poking through. Over here, you got one that's even almost all orange. And then we've got a couple different varieties of them right down there, so Fomitopsis monsiae. Pretty cool. Let's keep moving.
So thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland on this little crude video that I'm making, just walking around in the woods. Hope we gave you a little bit of an introduction to mushrooms and foraging mushrooms here in the spring. And if you wanna see other videos, this channel is chock full of videos like this. So some of them higher quality, some of them not so much. Um, just out here trying to have fun and talk about mushrooms and hopefully uh, give some uh, value and entertainment to you people out there in YouTube land. So thanks for joining and we'll see you on the next episode. Much love everybody.